everyone, I'm Gauri Zoshi from Carnegie Mellon University, and it is my pleasure to present our latest work on tackling the objective inconsistency problem in heterogeneous federated optimization. So in the first few slides, let me explain what I mean by heterogeneous in the context of this work and what I mean by objective inconsistency. So as all of you know, federated learning is heterogeneous in terms of the data collected by different clients. So since each client is in a different place and they are collecting data from their environment, the size and the statistical distribution of these local data can vary across clients. In this work, we are trying to understand how that data heterogeneity when coupled with computational heterogeneity affects the convergence of federated learning. So where does this computational heterogeneity come from? Here are some sources. First of all, in many practical implementations, the number of local epochs is fixed across all the clients. So if we fix the number of local epochs, then clients that have larger data sets will end up performing more local updates. So if we denote the number of local updates at the ith client by tau i, then it is proportional to ni, which is the size of that client's local data set. So this is one source of computational heterogeneity. Another way to perform FL training, which is especially good for straggler mitigation, is that instead of fixing the number of local epochs, we may fix a time window and then allow workers to perform as many local updates as they can within that time. So here, if we fix a time window and perform updates in that way, then faster clients will perform more local updates than slower clients. And as a result, again, the number of local updates will be heterogeneous across the different clients that participate in training. And finally, even if the number of local updates is fixed across clients, they may use different local optimizers or different learning rate schedules, et cetera, that might result in heterogeneous local progress being performed at these clients. So all of these sources of computational heterogeneity, we found uh, they cause a problem called objective inconsistency. So let me illustrate this problem through an example. Uh, consider first a homogeneous setting, homogeneous update setting, where we have two clients and the current version of the global model is xt0 as shown here. x1 star and x2 star are the optimum values of the local objectives. And x star is the optimal value of uh, optimal of the global objective. So if these two clients perform the same number of local updates and then we average them, then the updated global model, we expect it to eventually converge to X star, which is the global optimum value. So this is uh, what happens in regular federated learning when the number of local updates is same across the clients. But in a heterogeneous setting, when the number of local updates vary across clients, then we get a different behavior. So suppose client one performs many more local updates than client two, then this average global model, xt plus one, is biased towards client one's local objective. So as a result, um, in general, the solution to uh, federated learning in this heterogeneous setting will be biased towards clients which have more local updates. So what exactly does the solution converge to? Is it optimizing the local object, the global objective, or is it optimizing some other objective? So what we can show rigorously is that instead of optimizing the true global objective, which is given by fx, that's just a weighted sum of the local objectives fi, weighted by pi, which is the fraction of data at the ith client, 
So instead of optimizing this objective, the heterogeneous local update setting ends up optimizing a mismatched objective, f tilde, which is given by this equation. And observe that when a client performs more local updates tau i, that client gets a higher weight in the global objective function. In the special case where all the clients perform the same number of local updates, f tilde becomes the same as f. But when tau i's are different across clients, this mismatched objective can be arbitrarily different from the true global objective that we want to minimize. So a way to fix this problem is to aggregate the local updates in a different way. Now, in order to understand what is the right way to aggregate local updates, we came up with a generalized rewritten version of the federated learning update rule. So let me explain that by first recalling what the original federated averaging update rule is. It's given by this equation. What we do is that in every communication round, we take the local progress that is performed by the ith node, and that local progress is denoted by delta i. It's just the total distance that that client moves away from the previous version of the model. And then we aggregate these local progress values delta i in proportion of the data set size, which is pi. Now this ends up optimizing the mismatched objective f tilde, like I mentioned before. So in a rewritten version of this update rule, we consider that instead of sending the local progress delta i, each client sends a normalized gradient. So instead of delta i, the ith client normalizes delta i by the number of local updates that it performs. So it finds delta i divided by tau i, where tau i is the number of local updates, and then sends this value to the central server. So instead of these blue arrows, the two clients send the green arrows to the central server, which can then aggregate them to update the global model. So this is the generalized update rule that I've shown in green over here. It differs from the original federated, average, uh, um, federated averaging update rule in three ways. The first difference is that instead of delta i, we have di, where di is this normalized gradient. Secondly, instead of pi, we have wi, which are the aggregation weights that are applied to these normalized gradients. And thirdly, we use this additional term, which is tau effective, uh, which we call the effective steps per round. And this you can think of as a global learning rate that the server can apply to this aggregated update to scale it up or down, depending upon how fast the global model wants to move forward. So what we could show is that for this generalized update rule, uh, it ends up optimizing f tilde, which is given by the weighted sum of the local objectives, weighted by wi, which are these aggregation weights applied to the normalized gradients. And this generalized update rule subsumes many existing algorithms. For example, a special case is this original federated averaging update rule, we can achieve this by setting wi as this and tau effective as just the weighted sum of tau i's. Another special case of this generalized update rule is the FedProx algorithm, which is recently proposed by my colleague Virginia Smith's group. In the FedProx algorithm, the local solver, instead of being vanilla SGD, uses proximal SGD. So instead of di being just delta i by tau i, where we weight each of these black arrows, the local gradients equally, in FedProx, 
di is a linear combination of these local gradients where the weights ai are given by this vector where a higher weight is assigned to the more recent gradients the aggregation weights are given by this and tau effective is given by this quantity so writing fed procs in this generalized way gave us some very interesting insights on its convergence so when we analyze the convergence of this general update rule that convergence analysis applies to fed procs when we set these parameters in this way so the new insight that we got on the convergence of fed procs is that in fed procs there is this parameter mu uh, or in this case we call it alpha as you increase alpha the um, solution that we get becomes more consistent with the global objective so we actually do reduce objective inconsistency by using fed procs but that reduction in the bias comes at the cost of slowdown of convergence so as you increase the value of alpha which is that proximal parameter the effective number of local steps goes down and at the extreme uh, the effective number of steps can be equal to 1 so based on this insight what we tried to do is that we want we wanted to get um, a reduction or in fact we wanted to eliminate this bias without experiencing the slowdown and that is what we are able to do in um, our proposed algorithm which is called fed nova or federated normalized average so this is a general suite of algorithms um, the main idea behind them is basically that you have three free parameters in this generalized update rule the tau effective the wi and the normalized gradient in order to ensure objective consistency we just set wi equal to pi so if we do that naturally the surrogate objective f tilde becomes the same as the true global objective that we want to optimize and we inherently get objective consistency by setting wi as pi and now these other two parameters tau effective and the way we aggregate the normalized gradients at each client can be set freely so for example if we set these other parameters same as federated averaging the vanilla federated averaging then the update rule becomes like this which is almost the same as the federated averaging update rule except that earlier we were aggregating delta i's by just weighing them as according to pi's now we um, normalize delta i by tau i and then aggregate them so what happens here is that the workers that are doing more local updates get a lower weight in the aggregated gradient and unlike fed procs we do not incur a slowdown due to a smaller effective tau because we can choose this parameter freely we can choose it uh, and set it to the same tau as vanilla federated averaging and another interesting um, property of this um, general general method is that we can choose these ais freely as we want so different ais correspond to different local solvers such as momentum sgd or variable learning rate or we can also consider variance reduction methods such as scaffold and vrl sgd within this framework so let me quickly show you some experimental results um, that were pretty interesting so in these three plots we are comparing federated averaging fed procs and fed nova fed nova uses just vanilla federated averaging as the local solver the only thing that we are changing are these weights wi that are used to aggregate the local updates and even by just tweaking that weight we are able to get much better convergence than the previous methods and another nice thing is that fed nova can also be combined with the other local solvers such as proximal sgd which corresponds to fed procs um, 
VRL as GDE or scaffold. And the only thing that we need to change is the aggregation weights WI. So in this table, we are showing the test accuracy where the first column corresponds to using federated averaging to aggregate the updates. The second column um, is FedNova, which just tweaks these weights that are used to aggregate. And by keeping the local solver the same as before, we are able to get almost a 10% improvement in test accuracy.